Six-week break, the FIM World Trial Championship returns to the European countryside for a prestigious event. The Belgian Grand Prix is back on the calendar this season after a seven-year hiatus. And that will delight trials aficionados. The country has a long history in the championship, having been part of the very first title race in 75. The slippery conditions here in Belgium are a sharp contrast to the conditions at round four last time out in Italy. The World Championship travelled to the Alpine Valley of Valsesia for round four in the championship in Alagna, Italy. Adam Ragger came into the event with a two-point championship lead, Tony Bowe seemingly his only challenger. James Dable matched his previous best finishes in the Italian Grand Prix with fifth in the 2014 event and after inconsistency in Japan and Corsica, it was normal service resumed for the Brit. Jeroni Fajardo had been working hard since Australia to add to his tally of 30 career podium finishes and his appearance in Italy was the closest he's come to managing it as he finished just a point short of Albert Cabestan. But it was the older of the two Spaniards who took third place and a 69th career podium. The veteran just 10 marks back from second place becoming increasingly consistent in 2014. After three consecutive wins, the best Adam Ragger could manage in Italy was second to Tony Bowe. The reigning champion shook off all remnants of his recent rib injury to take a 59th career win. Victory in Italy continued a run of podium finishes that stretches back to 2012. Well, the last event was very important in Italy for taking back the championship lead. Obviously, there's still a way to go. Six races now. It'll be tough because the level of the sections with the rules is always tight and making a difference is always difficult. But we'll see how things go here in Belgium. Italian Grand Prix success gave Bo back the number one spot, but his duel with Adam Ragger couldn't possibly be closer. 26 points and more down. The nearest rivals just can't keep the pace. As Raga and Bo prepared for a mid-season Grand Prix battle, a separate tussle was kicking off elsewhere in the paddock. The 2014 FIM Women's Trial World Championship got underway in Belgium with the first of three rounds and without the presence of multi-championship winning star Laia Sands. That would open up the contest to some of her greatest challengers in recent years, as well as some of the newer recruits to the sport. Among the field, two representatives of the Ossa brand, Spain's lead rider Sandra Gomez and Germany's Teresa Baum. Katie Sunter, one of three British riders expected to play a part in the title race, and Emma Bristow, second in each of the last two years, who would start as favourites. The 2013 championship runner-up and one of only three different Grand Prix winners last year, Emma Bristow was victorious in the season opener in Belgium. The 23-year-old riding clear through the opening lap immediately, seizing the advantage at that stage. And the British rider took the first 10 of 25 eventually cleared sections. Only section 12 proved a sticking point for the rider, who dropped her only two fiascos at the finale, but was already comfortably ahead by then. A 24-point winning margin is the sort of dominant performance that immediately sets her up as favourite for the championship this year. Rebecca Cook made it a British 1-2 after squeezing home ahead of Sandra Gomez. Cook was only eight marks back from her fellow countryman Bristow after the opening lap, 
but three failed sections on the second tour left her adrift from her rival. And the lap's return of 17 also dropped her briefly out of second position. Two marks gained on section two would eventually be the result that kept her in the top two as she finished with 18 cleared sections. 27-year-old Cook is one of only two riders in the 2014 field to have won a Grand Prix previously and will be looking to bounce back in the remaining rounds this year. one year old Sandra Gomez set out her hopes to keep the World Championship in Spanish hands before the start of this year, but a disappointing start to the Belgian trial will have certainly dented that resolve. Failures on sections two and four of lap one, sections that didn't pose the same difficulties for the other top five competitors, left Gomez with ground to make up on her key rivals. Making up seven marks on Rebecca Cook through lap two, Gomez inherited second place, but Cook bounced back and the British riders took control of the trial. Italy's highest performer in Belgium was Sara Trentini. Using all of her experience, Trentini took a more cautious and mature approach to the sections that saw her not only clear 11 sections, but record fewer fiascos than all but one rider. While Emma Bristow remained out of touch, Trentini kept pace with the eventual podium runners and sat just five marks from third spot coming into the final lap. And although she could make no further impression notching a 20-mark tour, it was her best result since joining the series in 2010. Katie Sunter must have felt a contender for a first career podium finish as she sat just two marks behind third on the opening lap. But instead, the 29-year-old must continue her weight as she slipped back as the day progressed. Sunter's result helped the British riders to three of the top five positions in an impressive display that bodes well for the trial of nations later this year. And her efforts were the best that Gas Gas Mounted riders had to offer on the day. But she'll nonetheless have been disappointed not to get the better of Trentini, who she beat comfortably on three occasions last year. Emma Bristow forced to push her way up to the top of section 12, the only section she failed all day. A great result and 20 early championship points on the board. Five different nations represented in the top 10 places in Belgium, with Emma Bristow the commanding victor. An impressive advantage for her at the top of the final standings. Yeah, today was a really good day. Um, started off really well with a clean on the first lap. And then on the second lap, the rain came and you had to concentrate a little bit more. Um, yeah, a really good win and a, a good margin, so I'm really happy. More training for next, next time. With the first of four days of action completed, Emma Bristow takes the championship lead thanks to her advantage in Belgium. Rebecca Cook and Sandra Gomez will be expected to challenge next time out in Spain. A rain-swept podium shows just how hard the women's class was in Belgium. Competing in these conditions tough for all of the riders, but they put on a great show with a really tight battle over the final two podium positions. Ahead of it all, though, was Emma Bristow. With 33 points separating the top three in the world coming into the second half of the campaign, the top positions in the World Cup class look fairly stable. Jaime Busto is the current championship leader, a 17-mark advantage to his name. The only sign of weakness from the Spaniard has been the drop points in Italy, where he rode through the pain barrier. He won four consecutive events coming into that Grand Prix. Franz Kadlec seems his main competitor. In one of the closest World Cup rounds of the season, the top ten riders were separated by just eight marks at the end of three laps of action. And it was Germany's Franz Kadlec who came out on top thanks to an excellent final lap that took him above his main rivals. The beta rider sat only fourth after the opening lap and a disastrous second tour saw him notch 29 marks 
and slipped seemingly out of contention. But he saved his best until last with just one fiasco on the opening 11 sections of the final lap. And he survived nervous moments when he dropped to five in the last section of the day to win by just two marks. Cadillac's success can undeniably be chalked up to his more aggressive approach to the sections as he finished with two cleared sections more than his nearest rival. The result was vital for his championship challenge as in two successive events he's now cut the gap to the championship lead. And his first win since round one of the season will give him crucial confidence for the five remaining days of 2014 competition. a disastrous result in Italy, Stephen Coquelin returned to scoring with a podium finish in Belgium. The Frenchman's mere 11-mark score on the opening lap left him the day's leader, and despite a 27-mark second lap, he still held a four-mark advantage after the second tour. Coquelin will therefore have been justifiably disappointed to slip back and miss out on victory, but it was nonetheless a sixth double-figure championship return of the season for the 19-year-old. <laughs> Matteo Poli bounced back from his Italian Grand Prix disaster to record his best haul of points since Australia. His fellow countryman Pietro Petrangeli was the surprise third place finisher, while the more experienced of the two Italians had to settle for fourth position. Poli had been in contention for the win in the opening laps, but in the end he was just one fouled section from top spot. The shock result of the Belgian Grand Prix was Jaime Busto's worst performance of the season and only the third time all year that the Spaniard has been off the podium. The beta rider dropped four marks to his nearest competitor in Italy, but wouldn't have been unduly worried until this result that reignites the championship battle. Busto was again a challenger throughout and finished only six marks from the victory. But it was his middle lap that cost him further progress as he failed six of the final nine sections to drop back. And he was unable to recover when he became the only top 10 rider to concede marks in the opening two sections of the final lap. A final total of 16 clears was the second best of any rider. But he lost out on positions as a result of his 10 failed hazards through the day. 11 championship points whilst the worst return of his campaign was nonetheless enough to leave Busto in command in the title race. Since making his 2014 debut at the European Grand Prix, Hakon Pedersen has twice scored double-figure championship tallies. He missed out by one place in Belgium. The Norwegian finished a point behind surprise packet Billy Bolt of Newcastle, having tied with the British rider on the opening lap, but later slipping back. He had actually been in the driving seat for the event win, dropping just six marks around the first half of the final lap, but he dropped 22 marks on the final five sections of the day and slipped down the field. Ewan Roberts of Great Britain made it back-to-back -back points finishes after an excellent first lap put him in immediate contention. The disappointing second lap saw him notch 30 marks more than any other of the eventual top 10 finishers. And the Welshman missed out on eighth position on countback after he couldn't match the number of cleared zones of rivals above him in the final reckoning. One of the shocks of the day left Quentin Karl out of the points altogether in Belgium and slipped the French rider out of the top three in the championship overall. Surprises have been plenty in the World Cup class this year and the Belgian Grand Prix was no exception as four riders who'd all scored points in the seven previous days of competition this year missed out on points altogether in the damp conditions. Karl's as low as 27th after the opening lap and although he gradually improved during the day, he could manage only eight cleared sections through the entire contest, and that was only enough for 18. Yeah. 
21st position for Kenny Thomas capped a disappointing spell for the Frenchman. Having had his trailer and spares stolen in the build-up to the event, Thomas was already up against it coming into the Belgian Grand Prix, and his day's trajectory followed a similar path to his fellow countryman, Quentin Carl. With points gaps between the riders so small, the slightest errors were punished severely, and although he only dropped nine marks during the day, there were ten occasions on which he dropped three marks during the event, and that was enough to halt his scoring. Day by contrast for Franz Kadlec, a second event win and fifth podium of the season, bringing him right back into play in the championship. The pressure on right to the finish, and in fact, all of the top five failed the final zone, but that wouldn't be enough to stop the German from taking the crown. Oh. Shocks down the order as Kontan Karl, Kenny Thomas, Oriel Nogueira and Filippo Locca all failed to score. And after dominating earlier this year, Jaime Busto recorded his worst result of the season in Belgium. Yeah, second lap it starts raining and get much more difficult. At third lap it stopped and it get more easier. Matteo Poli is the biggest mover in the championship standings as he takes advantage of non-scoring riders around him. Meanwhile, Stephen Coquelin bounces back to third in the standings. Plenty of surprises in the World Cup class, not least on the podium. After the shock win of Luca Cotone in Italy, his fellow countryman Pietro Petrangeli provided the surprises in Belgium, but it was familiar face Franz Kadlec who took the top spot. Four riders are battling for seventh in the World Pro Class in 2014, and all of them are under 25. These competitors make up the rising stars of World Trials. Eddie Carlson currently sits at the back of the pack in 10. Uh, when I beginning in the World Pro, it was uh, the first races was hard, uh, much harder than I thought from the beginning, and uh, yeah, I need I feel that I need to training more than. I have done before, so yeah, it's a lot of a big step to go up in the World Pro. Uh, that one I'm fighting with right now is uh, Alexander Ferrer and Casales, and those one I'm very happy about my riding this year. Always you want to make better results, but I'm happy, so I I hope the results go going up in the correct line. Ahead of Carlson in.